Uh, g'day guys, I've been given a question by one of the viewers which is asking us to use the method of mathematical induction to prove that 4 to the power of n plus 15 n minus 1 is divisible by 9 for any value of n which is an integer greater than 0. So proof by mathematical induction can be a real pain in the ass. Well, at least it was for me when I was first getting started anyway. But I think over time I've found or I've stumbled upon what I believe is to be the best method or the best way of organizing your thoughts so you can go from beginning to end of the proof in the most logical sequence and give yourself the best shot of actually getting all the marks in any kind of exam problem which asks you to use the proof of mathematical induction to solve particular problems. So before we get started as well, don't be a pussy, subscribe to my YouTube channel and get some knowledge in you. You know, I'm only a new channel, so all the new subscriptions really do help me. But let's get to it. Okay, so before we get started, let's just quickly go through what I believe to be the four crucial steps which I think are required so we can give the examiners an adequately rigorous proof by mathematical induction. So the first step is we show that the proposition when we sub in one is true. So when we sub in n equals 1 into our formula, we show that the proposition is true. What we then do is we then assume that the proposition with a value of k is true. Now basically what this is, is this is our assumption that we have to make in a proof by mathematical induction, and it's required in all mathematical induction proofs. Then what we do is we show that because p of k is true, that implies that p of k plus 1 is also true. And then what we're going to do is once we've implied that, that's usually the most complicated step, we then end the proof. So what we first start with is we first start with outlining what our proposition is going to be. And then we show that the proposition at 1 is true. Okay, guys, so what I've done here is I've defined what my proposition is, pn and I've related it to the function 4 to the power of n plus 15n minus 1, and I've stated that it has to be divisible by 9. So this is me defining what the proposition is, or what we're trying to prove. And usually with these proof by mathematical induction problems, the examiner will require you to do this part. So a lot of people do skip over this, and then they lose marks. So I would advise that you just Make sure you write it down, it's not very complicated. So then what we're going to do, like step one says, is we have to show that the proposition at one is true. So we're going to go, the proposition at one is equal to four to the power of one plus 15 take one. And that's equal to 18, which is divisible by nine. So we can say, therefore, the proposition at one is true. So that's our first step worked out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to then assume the proposition at k is true. Now this assumption is very, very important. Okay, so this second step requires basically no thought whatsoever. You just have to make sure you write it in. So after we've evaluated the proposition at 1, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the proposition evaluated at k is true. So all we have to do is substitute k in for n in our function that we have up here. So the proposition at k is going to be equal to 4 to the power of k plus 15k minus 1. And that's going to be equal to 9 times some integer a. So a is an element of the positive integers. So basically we're saying in this statement here that the proposition at k is going to be divided by or divisible by 9. That's all that this particular point is saying. So this step here is probably one of the easiest steps. To do but it's also crucial that we do do it because this setup here is very important for the next step so now that number two is done on to number three so step three is the most complicated step in this entire process and this is what some people or some teachers refer to as the domino effect so what we have to do is we have to be able to show we're going to be basically using algebra that because the proposition evaluated at k is true, or if it's assumed to be true, that implies that the proposition at k plus 1 is true. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the examiner to consider the proposition at k plus 1. So here is the proposition at k plus 1, where we have 4 to the power of k plus 1 plus 15 k plus 1, 
minus 1. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to multiply out this bracket as well as break up this index here. So this is going to be equal to 4 to the power of k times 4 plus 15 times k plus 1 or plus 15 times 1 which is just 15 minus 1 which is equal to 4 times 4k 4 to the power of k sorry plus 15k plus 14. Cool. So what we're going to do next guys is going to demonstrate why step 2 in these four steps of mathematical induction is actually relevant at all. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the assumption that P of K is true. And what that helps me do is I can first write the statement as 4 to the power of K plus 15 K minus 1 is equal to 9A is assumed to be true. I can rearrange this formula so I have 4 to the power of K is equal to something. Okay, great. So we've got 4 to the power of k is equal to 9a minus 15k plus 1. And you might be asking, why do I give a rat's ass about that? Well, what I can do from here, guys, and this is I find quite clever, is I can stick this 4 to the power of k and insert it into this particular function here. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to stick it in for that. So I'm going to end up with 4 times, and rather than writing 4k, I'm going to write 9a minus 15k plus 1, which we have got from this assumption we made in part 2. Then I've just got plus 15k plus 14 on the end, which is the remainder of my proposition at k plus 1. So as you can imagine, guys, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to multiply out this bracket which gives me 36a minus 60k plus 4, and then we have our final terms which were outside of our bracket, 15k plus 14, and then I'm going to combine our like terms. Cool, so what I get is my a stay the same, I've got 36a, then I've got negative 60k plus 15k is negative 45k, then I have 4 plus 14 which is 18. Now from here guys, what I can do is you can see that this whole thing is factorizable by 9 because 9 goes into 36, 45 and 18. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize the entire thing by 9. And once I've factorized it by 9, I'm going to get 9 outside of 4a minus 5k plus 2. Now it doesn't matter what is inside the bracket here because whatever the number is in there, once I multiplied it by 9, it's obviously going to be divisible by 9. So that is my next step, is I make sure that I make reference to the fact that this particular function here will always be divisible by 9, regardless of the value of a and k. So I have to make sure I write that down as well for our examiners. So I have to show that this will always be divisible by 9 for all values of a and k, which are an element of the positive integers. So as long as a and k are positive integers, this entire uh, function or expression here will be divisible by 9. So now what we've just done, guys, is we've shown that the assumption that the proposition at k is true implies that the proposition at k plus 1 is true. So we have to make sure we also write that down. So we will usually say that therefore, assuming the proposition at k is true, this implies that the proposition of k plus 1 is also true. And now we have finished part 3 or step 3 of our four steps. And now on to the final step 4. So basically step 4, like step 2, is a bit of a no-brainer. You basically say exactly the same thing every time. So we're going to say, since P1 is true, and the truth of PK implies PK plus 1 is also true, then by the principle of mathematical induction, the proposition for all values of N is true. So we just have to make sure we write that down. Okay, Again, guys, finally, what we did to finish step four is we restated that since the proposition evaluated at one is true, which we did in step one, and the assumption that the proposition evaluated at k is true implies that the proposition evaluated at k plus one is true, 
then by the principle of mathematical induction, the proposition that 4 to the power of n plus 15n minus 1 is divisible by 9 for all integer values or all positive integer values of n. So let's just do a quick recap of how we got to this point at the end of our mathematical induction proof. First of all, what we did is we sort of went through these four steps which I feel are critical in the mathematical induction process. If you commit these to memory, they serve as a good anchor to, or a good map to get you through this process. So the first thing we did is we defined what the proposition p to the n was. We said that let the p to the n be this proposition here, where this statement is always divisible by 9 for integer values of n. What we then did is we evaluated the proposition at 1, because if it's not true for n equals 1, then you can just stop there. So once we'd figured out that the proposition evaluated at 1 is true, we then stated that we're going to assume that the proposition evaluated at k is true. So as a result, this particular equation has to be equal to whatever integer times 9. So this is just a value that's divisible by 9. So what we then did is then we asked the reader to consider the proposition at k plus 1. What I did is I inputted k plus 1 instead of n, then using algebra split my index as well as multiplied out my brackets and combined like terms. What I was then able to do is use the assumption that we have that the proposition of k is true to then substitute into the proposition at k plus 1 and as a result after a little bit of algebra I was able to get a formula or an equation that will always be divisible by 9 and as a result by arriving at this particular equation, we we're able to show that if we assume that the proposition at k is true, then we can imply that the proposition at k plus 1 is true. And this is that uh, domino effect. So if one is true, the other has to be true. So therefore, if the proposition at 1 is true, therefore the proposition at 2 is true. If the proposition at 2 is true, therefore the proposition at 3 is true. And as a result, the whole card tower comes crumbling down. So once we've got this implication here stated, we've finished part three, which is the hardest part. Finally, we then have to make sure that we write this proof statement at the end where we're saying that since the proposition at one is true and the truth or the assumption that P of K is true implies that P of K plus one is also true, then by mathematical induction, the original proposition is true. And from there, guys, we have completed the dreaded mathematical induction proof. So again, guys, these sort of problems take ages to sort of get comfortable with. And I don't think you'll ever get fully comfortable with them. There'll always be a weird one that someone might throw in front of you that you just won't know how to get to the end. But the best way I think to go through them is if you've got a completed one where you've got the proof correct, have that sitting down next to you while you're doing the next induction proof. So you can see the steps and you can visualize where you should be going from here. Now, this particular, just word to the wise, this particular substitution from PK into PK plus one is very, very common. So just keep that up your sleeve. If you start to get stuck, consider that particular substitution. But until next time, guys, just keep on practicing, practicing, practicing. If you bang your head against the wall, the wall will fall down. Subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos as often as I humanly possible. But most of all, just make sure you keep enjoying your maths. And I'll see you guys again here soon.